the morning. Mike and Arlen, our Philippine journey. Thanks so much for joining us. What kind of man is going to be hardest to adapt, to change, to be able to stay here in the Philippines? We're not going to blow rainbows and smoke up your butt. We're going to tell you what we've seen and how we've seen it. And the type of men from their backgrounds, not from their actions, are going to have the hardest time adapting to the Philippines. Let's talk about it. Okay, look, uh, first things first, if you appreciate the effort we put out to get these videos out, if you appreciate what we have to say, if you find this entertaining in any way, shape, or form, please do consider subscribing and hitting that thumbs up. It really helps us a lot. Now, what type of men? Hmm. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's not going to, I'm not going to sit there and say it's the arrogant guy. I'm not going to sit there and say it's the belligerent guy. I'm not going to say it's the asshole, although the asshole, that's a category all by itself. Um, no, instead, I'm going to say it is those men who come from certain industries. You know, here in the Philippines, any country you go to, if you leave your country, and this doesn't matter if you're American, Australian, British, European, every country is different, all right? When you leave those countries, when you leave your home country, where you're on your home court, all right, you're not there anymore. So what type of men are least able to adapt or take the longest to adapt? Because I, I truly believe any man can adapt. And this goes forward before I even say that, I want to say this. Anybody that has some reasonable amount of income can come to the Philippines and live a good life whether it'll be a good life in comparison to yours. Who are we to judge? Um, that's not going to happen. But let's talk about the guys that are going to have the hardest time. First off, it's going to be, and I'm guilty of this myself, your CEOs, your COOs, your CFOs, the C-suite of people, all right? Those men that have had a plethora of minions underneath them that they have ordered around, that set hard, fast, rigid rules, and you're fired if you don't follow those rules. Um, I'm not saying that's wrong, because in certain industries, you certainly have to do that. If people don't follow the rules in certain industries, people can get they can get hurt. People can die. In healthcare, you have a very rigid basis there. Um, in uh, engineering, you have a very rigid basis. Uh, you know, you don't do the math and do it all the right way or figure things out. But those people that have very rigid rules, your CEOs, your COOs, these, these are the people that command others rather than work with others because generally the the people that they work with generally those people are those same level executives the guys that went from high school to college college to an undergraduate degree from an undergraduate degree to an mba or a master's degree uh to a phd whatever right 
Some of these men are entitled. Entitled men. Men that feel they're entitled by virtue of their wealth, by virtue of their money, by virtue of their experience. Um, that's another big one. You know, I've traveled all over the world. I've been here. I've been there. Well, guess what? I've traveled all over the world and I've been and owned property in multiple countries. Or Lynn and I have been in and out and full time in the Philippines going on 10 years now. Nah, uh -uh. that doesn't that doesn't cut it. All right. You've got to have the ability to adapt. And these men, men like that are not able to adapt. Even, you know, I had to adapt and I'm not special by any way, shape or means. Arlen had to remind me this is part of the culture. Things being, here's a perfect example. We went grocery shopping the other day. Every two weeks, we go to the grocery store. We go pick up my pharmacy every two weeks. And one of the things that I was out of or wanted to pick up was creamy peanut butter. As a little snack, once in a while, I like a couple of crackers with peanut butter. Hey, one of my guilty pleasures, what can I say? We get to the grocery store and down the entire aisle, it's all crunchy. There is no creamy peanut butter. None. Did I throw a fit? Of course not. But there are men that will complain and bitch and moan and groan about it. Um, I used to be addicted to diet Pepsi. That's actually kind of hard to come by here. It's going to be Diet Coke. We know people that have just raised cane that they can't get Diet Pepsi. It's ridiculous. But eventually they adapt. The type of men that will succeed, for the most part, or they'll have less trouble adapting. All right, that's a better word to use, adapt. Those men, they're going to be the self-made men, the men who worked their way up from the bottom, the men who worked in groups of people, the men who didn't isolate themselves from the worker bees, okay? Those men, they understand that they have to work together. It is a symbiotic relationship with everything around them. Those are the type of men that will have the least amount of trouble adapting. Okay. Now, when we say adapting, does that mean we're going to be happy? Mm, no. Adapting means you understand the process. Now, whether you can agree to like that process or not, it's a different story, and it's not one for us to judge in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, it, it's imperative that those men that feel entitled, those men that are arrogant, those men that are rigid in rule setting and expect those rules to happen and take place without fail, they're going to be the hardest to take to this cycle of adaptation. It really and truly will. Um, you know, it, it's sort of like you're never going to get or you're very infrequently going to get in the Philippines the same type of <clears throat> table service in a restaurant that you will in the U.S. In the U.S., uh, they want to turn, that. It, those of you that are in the restaurant business know exactly what I'm talking about. They want to turn that table over. They want you happy because the waitress, waiter, is going to get a better tip if you're happier. Your drinks are going to kept be filled. They're going to constantly check on you. And when they see you're done eating, they're going to present that bill. Is there anything else I can get you, sir? 
in the Philippines, that doesn't happen. In the U.S., they're, they know if they turn that table over, if they get those patrons out, build and out, all right, they can put somebody else there. The waiter makes a better tip, makes another tip. The kitchen gets to prepare another dish. The restaurant makes more money. For some reason, that's hard to find in the in the Philippines. It really is. Some places, yes, all right? There are businesses that that absolutely do pay attention to that. And there but for the most part, that's not what you're going to find. It's a very laid back lifestyle. It's a very relaxing lifestyle. See, so on the one hand, you have all these bloggers telling you to come to the Philippines. It's a laid back lifestyle. Well, that goes across everything from your service at the restaurant to your interaction with officials at immigration. Okay. It's a laid back atmosphere. When you go and you buy two gallons of paint, and you find out you're a half a gallon short, and you go back and you say, "Can I need another gallon of uh, Harvest Green or whatever color?" Sorry, sir, not in stock. When will you get it? Can you order it? I don't know, sir. It's whatever the home office sends. Life can be a little bit different here if you can't contain yourself if you can't and and that's not even that's a bad word way to say it it's not a fact of containing it okay because when you contain it you're just going to build up and build up if you can't accept that things are going to be different that some things you have no control over then you're going to be that kind of person that it's going to be hard to adapt so we find that the the most common criteria are those high level executive guys people like me all right high level professionals that were in rigid working situations rigid business situations um uh and yet i was able to do it and you can too i don't have a problem with it we don't regret moving to the philippines full time uh, any way, shape, or means. We, we we go to the province. We have a home in the province where nothing is like back west. Uh, in, in fact, um, if you live in any city, major city in the Philippines, the province is another 25 years behind it. And its mindset might culturally be 30 or 40 years behind in many places okay all i'm saying is is that <clears throat> we're just pointing out to people people that watch this blog that put the word out that talk about different things it's not all roses here okay and some men should really look hard before they come and then when they do come Come prepared to spend only a couple months, three months maybe, and then go home and look at what you're leaving and think about what you went to. Can you then adapt to that? Because until you immerse yourself in the Philippines, and when I say immerse yourself, I don't mean spend two weeks at Akata, all right, in Manila. No. That is not immersing yourself in the Philippines. Immersing yourself in the Philippines is to get around, to be in different places, to look around. But until you do that, you don't know just how difficult it might be for you. We wish you the best of luck. We want you to succeed, but we also don't want you to fail miserably. If you fail miserably, you have the odds of losing so much. Shouldn't you just try and fail a little bit? I don't know. You tell us your comments, your thoughts. We look forward to it. Have a great day.